All right, what's up, people? <clears throat> I figured I'd do a follow-up to my most popular recent video, which concerned um, a reworking of the Satanic Bible by one Dr. Michael Aquino. And the one legit criticism that I got, which I made fun of, of course, because I'm going to do that, the one legit criticism I got was that I didn't go into a lot of depth. And really, I didn't do that because I want you guys to get this book and read it for yourself, yourselves, however you want to fucking parse that shit. But I figured that I'll take this as a follow-up and I'll just try to go into a little bit more detail as to what's actually going on. The first thing you have to understand is that Michael Aquino was a legitimate genius and a PhD <laughs> who was a PSYOP officer in Vietnam. <laughs> this guy is legit, no joke. And he's a little weird, okay? <laughs> you gotta give him a little weird. But to be to be all those things I just said, <laughs> you gotta be a little weird, dude. I'm just saying. So when you read this book, understand it's written by a PhD. So it's gonna have it's gonna have all the footnotes. Everything is footnoted. As a matter of fact, there's one thing that's footnoted that should have been an entire chapter, and it was in his other work on the Church of Satan. He just referenced it briefly, which is that um, the book of Satan, the the book of Satan in the actual Satanic Bible is basically just Ragnar Redbeard, might is right, right? With a few words substituted here and there. <laughs> he just puts that as a footnote because of his love for Anton LaVey. And see, okay, so you got footnotes aplenty, you have introductions, you have dedications, you have forwards, you have afterwards, you have, did I say dedications? You have inspirations, you have appendices, and like I said, footnotes are plenty. So this is a work of scholarship. It actually is. So what exactly is Aquino doing with this book? He's basically saying that if you really want to take him for what he's really saying, and if you go by what he says in his introduction, is that this was basically his vision since he was ordained, I think it was Magus fifth degree or whatever the fuck. The thing that he fucking, that's the first thing he posted in this book. To prove his legitimacy. As if he still got to prove it to a dead man. And see, this is where I fall, and, and trust me, I'm going to get back to a critique of Aquino in a second. Because I think this is going to tell you everything you need to know. Is that when I dealt with him on the 600, there were always there were a couple things that he would always put out there. And he was like, unabashedly like... This should have been the way it was, and blah, blah, blah. And one of those was something called the Diabolicon, which I think he would probably... <sighs> There's the Book of Coming Forth by Night, which I do not believe is included in here, but there's also... Well, the word of set is kind of like that. So what he, what he's really doing is he's basically saying... If I could redo the Satanic Bible and make every dream that I wanted to come true, true, this is how I would do it. So he, he nixes the book of Satan as it was, meaning Might is Right by Ragnar Redbeard, and he inserts his Diabolicon with, of course, a preface and an introduction and an appendix and footnotes, <laughs> etc. Et no, he doesn't footnote that. He considers that an inspired text. He really did. He considered that an inspired text, like Liber AL or something like that, something along those lines, like a received text. That's how he firmly he believed that. So, of course, that becomes his book of Satan. Then when it comes to the book of Lucifer, what he does is he takes the original rainbow tracks, and instead of saying what they said, because, of course, that would be plagiarism, what he does is he offers a brief commentary on each one, <laughs> Just kind of like, not even like a paragraph, just kind of like a couple sentences. <laughs> and he's expecting you to have the Satanic Bible in hand 
while you're reading this alongside of it. So you can say, oh, Anton said that. Oh, that's what he really meant. <laughs> and that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to kind of rewrite history. He wanted, he constantly to the end of his, his days, he wanted Anton LaVey to be a theist. And Anton just wasn't. <laughs> he just wasn't. He wasn't a theist. You don't have to be you, man. You don't have to make somebody else in it what you fucking want them to be. And that was the rift, and that's what caused the schism in the Church of Satan. But where you had the temple set go off this way and, you know, kitty drinks go off that way. <laughs> Who's the kitty drink? <laughs> uh, apparently there's a few of them. And what's with that goddamn Sunday syrup? <laughs> Something's going on down here. <laughs> Something not suitable for the camera. But then what he does is he gives his own book of Lucifer, which is entirely different, and it's mostly focused on his metaphysics. See, because LeVay's book of Lucifer was dealing not with metaphysics, but with social commentary. And so what Aquino does is he basically ticks each one of those off in the order that they were given. So if you if you have LeVay's over here and you have Aquino's over here and you read LeVay's, and it's going to, LeVay's going to have probably about three quarters of a page or a page and a half for each one. Aquino's got a paragraph for each one. And it's just a critique. It's like, oh, he said that, but what he really meant was that. So that's that. And then, of course, he introduces his own fucking definitions in the book of Belial. He keeps his structure. So it's basically the same structure. It's Satan, Lucifer, Belial, and then Leviathan. And he keeps the same kind of concept in that the book of Satan is a diatribe, and his diatribe was the Diabolicon, <laughs> which he envisioned as a reworking of Paradise Lost, by the way. The only book that he took with him in his journey to Vietnam as a PSYOP officer. <laughs> Seriously, that's, that's a true story. <laughs> was LeVay being a criminal investigator a true story? No one knows, and no one cares. <laughs> Why live a life if you could just make one up, right? <laughs> that would be something Anton LeVay would say. Why live that life if you can just pretend you do? And I think he lived most of his adult life that way. But that's just my, my personal psychological critique of Anton LeVay. Aquino wanted him to be more serious. He wanted him to be more metaphysical, more theological, that, that type shit. And LeVay just wasn't going for it. Matter of fact, he started seeing that that was his entire fucking shtick. Was he wasn't going for that. He was pure materialist. Right? So let me let me just take a step back for a second and show you what I got. Now I'm gonna unbox this motherfucker for sure. That's a pinhead, complete with the configuration, which goes right there. But like I said, I haven't unboxed him yet. I will though. Then I got me a Zartan. I'm not gonna unbox him. Because again, you see, with the new G.I. Joe's you'll notice that they have no articulation in the joints, whereas the original G.I. Joe's did. So there's my Cobra Commander, right? And I still haven't unboxed them. Then, of course, I got a Chewbacca. I got me this, though, too. I got me a Luke Skywalker, also. And you're wondering what's with the fucking rainbow shit. No, it's not a pride thing. <laughs> it's that those were original, like, behind-the-scenes concept figures that they used so that they could show off the... Di Never mind, don't worry about it. If you buy one, it'll explain it to you. But um, because the original G.I. Joes, they were articulated at every joint. So you had an elbow joint that could move. You had a wrist joint that could move. Most people don't remember that shit. Of course, the neck. But more importantly, the torso. And then the knees. Now, here's the problem. And if you've ever bought a vintage G.I. Joe, like, like if you went out and tried to get an original fucking, like, let's say a Storm Shadow, which would probably be... I would probably say one of the most expensive figures if you wanted to get one. Or actually the hooded Cobra Commander because you could only get that on a mail-in. <laughs> and I was one of the guys that did. <laughs> I got the hooded Cobra Commander. You know they banned that now because of the whole hood thing. Don't worry, I'm going to get back to the whole Satanic Bible thing. I'm just having a toy rant. So the, <laughs> the idea was that because of the way that they hinged everything together, first of all, your ball joints... Like the ones over here that would move the arm up and down 
and the wrist joints that over time those would just get to the point where they were flabby so there would be nothing you could do to like maneuver the hands like it, i couldn't put his hand up here because it would just it would just fall down everything would be flabby the knees would buckle everything just because of the nature of the fucking toys at that time because they were using these fucking um pins like metal pins and then the most important part was the torso because on the torso you basically you had to have this rubber band situation that went in the middle of the fucking torso that held the bottom to the top and it was a hook and ladder mechanism <laughs> trust me because they used to make hybrid figures hybrid gi joes and don't tell me y'all never did that if y'all ever had gi joes like the original gi joes you used to make hybrid figures because you could take you could take arms off you could take <laughs> torsos off you could take heads off sometimes depending on the ball joint <laughs> sometimes snapping them back in were hard though but anywho so getting back to um aquino i think this is a man and i've interacted with him I say many times to the point where I think I understand him as a human being or understand who he used to be as a human being is that he was very much a man stuck in the past. Whereas he wasn't a Luddite. So it wasn't like he had trouble using the internet. As a matter of fact, he was very good at using modern technology because he's a smart guy. But when it comes to pop culture, pop art, pop literature, things like that, like like the trend as it's moving forward, or as I like to call it, you know, the current. <laughs> and that is a double entendre, and if nobody ever picked up on it, well, finally you did. The current is not just like, like a, a, you know, a movement in the ocean. It's also the current, meaning the present, as envisioning the future. Right? <laughs> the present which shapes the future. He was stuck in the past. This book is evidence of that. He goes back to the same Enochian keys. Look, I hate to say this. This book, I think, was published in 2016, which doesn't even make it, what, eight, eight years old yet? But it's still relatively recent. The scholarly work that's been done on Enochian and that entire system has been like earth shattering. <laughs> and he didn't include any of that. He just went along with the same fucking thing Anton did, which is a PhD he should have known better than doing. So again... I would look at this in two ways. I would look at it as a scholarly work because it is, it's presented as such. The depth of that scholarship, you might want to question because there's a lot of self-quotation, which is always a bad sign. <laughs> and then just documentation, documentation, <laughs> which is like, okay, yeah, it was said, but thanks for telling me where it was originally. That's a good scholarly technique, but when you start self-reporting, when it's like you're quoting yourself, Eh, well then there might be a degree of, I don't know, narcissism involved. I have no idea. I'm not a psychologist. And I can't prescribe pills. So that makes me doubly not a psychiatrist. And I'm damn sure not a teacher. But if I was going to buy this book, I would buy it as what it, it pretends to be. Which is a quote-unquote update of the Satanic Bible. Which basically is LeVay, not LeVay, sorry, Aquino getting in a time machine and going back 20 years, 30 years, or as he says, 50 years, and saying, Anton promised me we were going to redo the Satanic Bible. And then he reneged, nagged. I didn't say nigged, but what if I did? He was an Indian giver. Oh, shit. Someone called Pocahontas. Now, I had to put that late in because, no, you know, jokes don't fly these days. Those were jokes. I mean, I'm just deadpan with it sometimes. But, yeah, that's, that's what this book is. 
it's an insight into the mind of a genius who was also many other things <laughs> as to where he would have seen the Church of Satan and more importantly its founding text going. In that case, it's fascinating. As far as, a, as, far as an idea about like genuine metaphysics or genuine ethics or genuine anything that makes any fucking sense. No, it's just another goddamn comic book. They're all fucking comic books, man. That's what I've been trying to tell y'all, man. Except mine. Mine is not a comic book. It's a commentary on a comic book. <laughs> what does that make it a meta comic? Because they're all goddamn comic books, man. Anywho. Yeah, buy this book, man. Seriously. Don't skimp on it. It only costs like 14 something. I mean, if you have Amazon Prime, you don't pay for shipping. Speaking of shipping, holy fuck. I have the Song of Achilles over there. I've been meaning to grab that for a long time. I finally got it. The Song of Achilles. Speaking of shipping. <laughs> Was actually not shipping because back then they were gay. Everybody knew Achilles and what was it Patroclus, Patroclus, whatever the fuck his name was. His his little boy man. They did that back then, man. Even Achilles, the strongest of all heroes, not named Hercules. And I think Hercules might have been one of the only of their heroes that never was portrayed as. Yeah, but they had him killing his wife and kids. So, well. Because, you know, Zeus fucked up, I guess. 